The morning of October 14, 2007, I received the phone call every parent dreads. It was the director of the study abroad program in which our son Nathan was enrolled, calling from Salzburg, Austria. Nathan's been hit by a car, he explained. He's in surgery now. The bones of Nathan's face were crushed and both his legs shattered. The street was stained with his blood. Han and I boarded a plane to Austria fearing what we'd find there. Would our handsome scholar's son be horribly disfigured and maimed or worse? By the time we arrived at the hospital, Nathan was in a coma. The only sign of life was the rising and falling of his chest as the respirator breathed for him. The doctors warned us that the prognosis for severe brain trauma was uncertain. We'd have to wait and see, they said. Ten days passed with us spending hours every day at Nathan's bedside, holding his hands as he lay utterly motionless. It must have been my sense of helplessness that inspired me one evening to suggest to Hannah that we sing Jesus Loves Me. Hannah joined me in song. Imagine my surprise when I felt Nathan's hand move in mine. Hannah told me I must have been imagining things. Then Hannah herself was dumbfounded to feel his other hand squeeze hers. The two of us were so excited we could hardly contain ourselves. Hannah suggested we sing Amazing Grace. As we did so, Nathan began moving his arms and legs, his head and face. It was almost as exciting and almost as unnerving as watching someone in a morgue come back to life. To have Nathan's motionless figure suddenly come alive was the most wonderful shock of my life. Nathan went on to become more and more alert day by day. Within two weeks, he was off the respirator and able to talk with us and the Austrian surgeons managed to reconstruct the bones of his face and skull without scarring his face at all. They did the surgery through his nose and mouth. Incredible. That was the first of Nathan's great awakenings, the renewal of his body. But then, on November 18, Nathan had a seizure, a common occurrence with those who've had brain trauma. The seizure left him glassy-eyed, confused, and uncommunicative. I was dismayed to ponder the awful possibility that Nathan's keen mind might be forever lost. The doctor reminded us that brain injuries are unpredictable and that we'd have to wait and see. I thought to myself that I couldn't endure such waiting for long. But that evening I found encouragement in Psalm 79 8. Let your tender hearted mercies quickly meet our needs. The psalmist didn't hesitate to ask the Lord to work quickly, so I did the same. Imagine my delight the very next day to find Nathan better than ever. He was back to being alert, communicative, and laughing about how out of it he'd been the day before. That was the second of Nathan's great awakenings, the renewal of his mind. Now, two years later, Nathan is not just back to school, but back to getting straight A's and applying for graduate program scholarships. He's become a very different person. Those months in the hospital and in rehab reshaped the way he looks at life. He's been transformed from a silly boy to a deep man, a man who's in earnest about life and about God. He says of the accident, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And this dad is convinced that that third great awakening, the renewal of Nathan's heart, is the most extraordinary and the most wonderful of all.